Charlotte. Hey, how are you? All good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Having okay. a busy day? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the morning was okay. Now it's getting a, a little bit busy and I'm a, still in a bit of a mess because we had uh, pre-productions, but I hope that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. How are you? Everything is good. You know, I got a bit of a sore throat somehow. It's not COVID. I don't know what it is, but, you know, it's it comes with the job of getting old. <laughs> it comes with talking a lot, which I can imagine you do a lot for your interviews. So Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's talk about the new records. And the first question is, is making music an obsession? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't think I could. Um, I don't think I, I could do without. Uh, I, I remember there were times when I was feeling like I was slowly going insane, and then I, I wrote something about it, and then I felt much better. So um, I think so. I think it's one of my healthier obsessions, maybe the healthiest obsessions, because contrary to a lot of other things, like it actually. Uh, helps you process things and makes you feel better. So yeah, you use music as a, you know, as a, a way of dealing with certain things that, you know, we, we all go through stuff that we cannot talk with other people sometimes, or we think we cannot talk. <laughs> and is music a way for you to kind of vent those? thoughts that you cannot tell anyone else yeah definitely there's a lot of things that you can do under the flag of art which um would be weird or awkward or slightly disturbing um if if it were a regular conversation um but put them in a song and and uh and they make sense. And sometimes people even relate, even though, you know, it's not something that you would easily speak about. Mm. So I wouldn't fully say art is therapy because, you know, everyone just needs to go to therapy too. Uh, but <laughs> it is definitely a good way to process things that, like you said, um, maybe are not so easy to talk about in like a day to day setting. Yeah. yeah, you know, I advise therapy to people as well. Um, some of them need a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, some just need, you know, for me, well, I went to therapy a few times and, you know, being confronted with your own thoughts, a lot of the time it's scary and it's uncomfortable. It's no fun. It's, yes, it, it, I... I I know, <laughs> but still, you know, um, there's a lot of things where you have to go through an uncomfortable phase or like even a very painful phase in order to make everything after that just a little bit more bearable. Because so far, like for me, the most painful things are the ones where you have to actively stop yourself from thinking about them all the time and you know you cannot do that forever at one point it has to come out you have to be confronted with it you have to talk about it um yeah so yeah <laughs> it's always nice so yeah i'm on this i'm on the same uh on the same uh yeah i also <laughs> recommend <it> to people <laughs> And so when did you start working on the songs that become the obsession? Well, because with the previous records, you explore the different musical world and, you know, you always surprise us. We don't know what to expect. And then you throw us the obsession. With, it's what I would say people will identify you with what you've done in the past more than the previous couple of records that you did. Um, when did you start working on the songs and when did you realize, you know, that more heavy side was something that you wanted to explore for these records? 
So, so I started doing the Patreon in 2020, and when I started to do that, it was really to have a place for the songs that were anything but what I was working with on with Delane at that moment, because it was intended to be like a side project, you know, for anything that wasn't symphonic metal. So in the beginning, it was a very conscious choice to kind of do everything that was not what people uh, sort of expected, because if it was something that would fit into kind of a symphonic metal world, yeah. then I would hang on to it for maybe, you know, the next Delane writing sessions or... Um, so, yeah, so the fact that the first songs that I put out, that they um, that they were like a very different genre, that was a very conscious choice. After that, it, w it became more of a sense of, you know, just wild exploration. Okay, I've done this thing for 16 years, now I'm going to see what else is out there, and you know. And so as things progressed and after the lane split as well, you know, every now and then it was a symphonic metal song, but then, you know, every now and then it would be like an electronic thing or like a folky thing. And I thoroughly enjoyed, you know, doing all of that and exploring all of that. But after two years, and that is kind of where, you know, the answer to your questions, after two years and after Tales from Six Feet Under Volume 2 was released, I felt like, okay, I've done a lot of, you know, playing around and having fun, you know, trying all of these different things. And it's not like I'm ever going to stop playing around or trying different things. But that was the moment where I thought, now I want to make not a compilation of different songs that were written to be a song by itself. But now I want to start working on an album with songs that belong together, a sound that is more cohesive, not all the same, but, you know, yeah. where where the songs kind of tell a story together and it has a beginning and an end. And then also, of course, I wanted to replace because on those albums it was all programmed, you know, me in the basement during the pandemic with a MIDI keyboard. Um, this, this is also something that I really wanted to different. Uh, I had performed with a great band uh, during the club tour for uh, Tales from Six Feet Under and like there was no doubt in my mind that um, I wanted to have them on this album uh, as well. So uh, I think it was, yeah, around September, October, yeah, around the release of Tales from Six Feet Under, Volume 2, that I started. I think one of the first songs that I wrote for The Obsession, Oh You Are, I remember that it was just too late to make it to Tales from Six Feet Under, Volume 2, and that I thought, you know what, this is actually a good thing, because I think that this this would fit greatly on the, the band album. <laughs> and do you like, do you prefer the band environment? Is it more like inspiring to you? Like you were mentioning the club tour you did. It, it seems that even though you enjoy obviously exploring different musical avenues, being in the band has a different energy to it. Yeah, it's very different. It's very different. But the, the nice thing is, like, within the current setup, I, I kind of get to do both. Like, I get to be really introspective in, like, the first phase of the songs, where, you know, I write them and, and I put them on Patreon. And then, um, at least that's how it went with this album. So I made the first version of the songs. I put them on Patreon. So patrons, they know, like, the first incarnations of the songs, which is which is a lot of fun. Like, they get to see how it changed, you know, with the involvement of the band. And then um, I went into this rearranging process uh, with the band and... Um, with Timo, uh, mostly was very, uh, very involved in like, um, kind of reshaping the songs so that they would work for, um, for the band recordings. Um, and you know, he did uh, absolute wonders in the guitar arrangements. Uh, so that was really a really important phase. And then we got into the studio to record all together. The drum recordings is where we were all in the studio together. That was really fun and, and really inspiring. And that was, yeah, I 
I really had moments where my heart jumped for joy, you know, of how cool it was to hear the songs with the band, to hear what Joey did with the drum arrangements. Um, he is he is such an incredible and and creative drummer as well. So just you know, in every phase of working on the song with the band, like yeah, the songs grew, and yeah, that was that was just incredible to see, but. Um, the nice thing about it though is that, yeah, I don't really have to choose because, um, I get to have both of those experiences within, you know, the making of an album. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's important for everyone to explore other types of music to kind of understand what they really want to do in the end. It's. Yeah. I, I think it should be the same for everyone, at least for me. I like to listen to every kind of music, but I know what mu what the what music what type of music is really important to me in the end. Yeah. You know, I love classical music. I listen to some pop music. You know, country music as well sometimes. Country music. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fun because. Lyrically, it's all about the same. <laughs> I, I mean, I had never enjoyed country, and then I listened to Beyonce's new record because I was, I was so ready to dislike it, and I absolutely loved it. So I am at a point where I'm like, okay, maybe I should reconsider my stance. So if you have any recommendations for me later on then then let me know yeah you know it's and for me sometimes listening to those different styles of music it's what make it it's what makes me appreciate more the heavier side of music the rock the metal and you know every time even you know i was in a festival a few weeks ago Dua Lipa yeah. was headlining and i Honestly, didn't know any song from her, mm -hmm. but because I was photographing from the side, I was listening to the music, I was watching the crowd, the way they were reacting, yeah. and it gave me a different perspective on on her music and, you know, that kind of pop, more electronic kind of music. And, you know, I didn't become a fan, but... I, I respect their show. It was very well set up, you know, from yeah. start to finish. And, you know, the crowd was crazy. So Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's the same for me. I listened to so many different kinds of music. And, you know, I dipped my feet in, you know, trying to do different sorts of music as well. Um, and, you know, back in the day, I was also like in, in a... In a, a in an orchestra and I played the clarinet and I was in a big band doing like jazz stuff and um, um, and I loved all of that but you know then there's the one thing that kind of really gets you going and yeah that's yeah. <laughs> the heavy sound I get more exciting when it gets heavier <laughs> I, I always love like a, the heavier sound of the guitar you know when it's well played and you know you were talking about Timo Timo is a fantastic yeah. guitar player I mean he's the best He's crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think he's the absolute best. And uh, um, not just in the way that he is, you know, uh, he can play like a virtuoso, but also in his approach to the songs. Like he's um, he's worked wonders on this songs, these songs but really on what works for these songs. And I've seen and heard him work in like different genres as well, doing completely different things and, and doing the things to work with that song as well. So uh, yeah, on, on, on all levels, um, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's an amazing guitarist and he has some solos on this record, but also live. We did a solo for um, We. <laughs> He played a solo for uh, Self Revolution. We did a part in Self Revolution where he got to do like a, a solo that basically went on as long as he liked. And 
you know, I cried a little every time, and I cry a lot. But <laughs> this, this was, uh, yeah, not a dry eye in the room. Like it's, um, yeah. Yeah, the, the thing I appreciate about Timo, you know, is a fantastic guitar player. You know, he can shred. It could be like soloing for an hour if he wanted, but it's how he makes a, makes it important. The song, it's what matters. You know, it's mm -hmm. not about showing off. I mean, it's good that he can show he off. Good, <laughs> but yeah. But he, he plays for the music, and uh, yeah. it's sometimes we 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 look at uh, virtuoso guitar players, and not all are able to play for the song. And yeah. Timo is able to do that. And, you know, you're very lucky to have him in a band. <laughs> I am. I am, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very grateful to get to play with these people. And then also just have them be my buddies. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> the best of both worlds, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when you start writing, you know, the topics for this album are fear, Obsessive thoughts, escapism. Um, was it easy to write all about <laughs> this, putting putting it all out? In a way, yes. Uh, in a way, like just talking about the lyrics. Uh, the songs that sort of write themselves are often the ones where you're like, I kind of want to write about this, but maybe it's too personal. Maybe it's embarrassing, but it's kind of like the stronger and the more feelings you have about it, the, you know, the more you have to put the paper. Uh, for example, the exorcism. I remember I was actually working on another song and I'd been working on it for a long time. And I couldn't get it where I wanted it. And then I had a mixing appointment. Like I had my mixing day booked two days later. And then I was like, I'm just going to start a new song because this one's not working out. And then um, the exorcism just rolled out. So while that is probably... That's that's the one that's also kind of like hardest to sing. Like there's a lot of songs. If I sing them by now, I'm thinking like, oh, how do I, you know, place the vowels right, or how do I do I sing it nicely? How do I get to the high note? But uh, this one is always just how do I get through? <laughs> how do I get through the story okay and not break down? You know. So it, it's uh, yeah. But that one was very quick to write. Same goes for dopamine, where I was like. Am I really going to write about the fact that I was on antidepressants and that I couldn't feel mentally, but also physically? I was like, that's a little embarrassing. That's a little TMI. Like, are you really going to write that you're dying to get off? Like, is that really going to be the lyrics? But those are the ones that are like, Vroom. it's, yeah. Sometimes I feel like the more... Yeah, the more the more personal or painful or embarrassing it is or obsessive, the easier it is. And when I was looking at all of the things that were on the album, uh, this is also why it's called why it's called the obsession. Is I felt that so much of it kind of revolted around fear, and I was diagnosed with OCD a few years ago. And then I thought, you know, if that's what it is, then I'll just call it what it is. Uh, and yeah, um, and I just hope that there's people because I don't think that you can only relate to it if you have that too. I think that there's a lot of fears that are, are sort of universal fears, and and I hope that people who listen to it kind of feel some solace in it, or you know, or that they don't feel alone, or that they feel like it's not such a taboo to talk about it. For example, with the medication and the from the song dopamine that I was talking about. I like I hope that there were more people talking about it when I was going through that because there were so many side effects that I never heard of. Um yeah. That was a very long answer to your question yeah. but and but yeah, you know the, you're we, right about <laughs> yeah. But when you we're talking about medication I'm on medication and sometimes you have side effects that 
you never associate with a medication. You just think it's something else. And yeah, yeah, I I had wild dreams, for example, and I never knew that that was a part of what the medication did. But I, I had such vivid dreams that at one point I wasn't sure if I remembered something that like actually happened, or that it was in a in a dream, and it and. You know, then I started looking for it and I really, really, really started digging. And then I found, oh, this is actually a common thing. I was like, it would have been nice if this was just, you know, out there and people were talking about it more. Because I think that in a lot of Western countries, like one out of 10 people is on antidepressants. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 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 I don't know what that says about us as a society, but if that is what it is, then let's at least, you know. Let's be open about it. You know? Yeah. And, you know, I, that's one of my issues. I have vivid dreams on a nightly basis. Oh, yeah. It's so ridiculous. You know, I, the dreams are so freaking real a lot of the time. I wake up, I, I, I wake up sometimes very tired because yeah. of whatever was going through my head. And it's very hard to, you know, do something about it. And I was with a cardiologist and I asked him, you know, is there anything we can do about it? And he said, no, <laughs> you know, it's, you're on that medication, you have to take it. If there is a side effect. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you and, write them down? Uh, the dreams? Yeah. No, some, some I just try to forget. <laughs> There is there there is um, a, a dream or a place in this case that's very recurrent a lot of the times. It's like it's like a, a a part of a city, and I never been to that city. I I don't know where it is, but a lot of the times during the dreams it, and it and they are different dreams. They're never the same. Yeah. There's that place that, you know, I don't know why it shows up. I have no idea what it is, what it is, what it means, nothing. Maybe one day you will find yourself in a city and look around and you'll be like, this is it. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> you know, but it's interesting, yeah. It's, uh, you know, for me, it's always... and. I know there, there, there's like a couple of places. One has a train station nearby, and it's made of brick walls and stuff. And the other is just gray, a gray kind of wall thing from a city. And, you know, maybe from a past life I was, you know, living there. I don't know. You know, it's the universe still has a lot that we don't know about. It's very interesting to think yeah. that, you know, we're just made of particles and maybe when we're gone, we just go and then come back in a different shape in whatever, you know? Yeah. But it's something I, I prefer to think like that. <laughs> then I'm just going to, you know, die, go under and that's it. <laughs> no more. I prefer to think that the particles will just go away and then they will come back some other time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, let's talk about music <laughs> then my thoughts. <laughs> okay, I started it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, you know, it's a good thing about conversations, you know, you never know where it goes. And, you know, sometimes it's nice to talk about these things anyway. And with the, the album comes a tour, you're doing a tour with Vola. Um, what can you expect from the tour? How many songs do you have planned from this new record to play live? Is there any idea yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we uh, were playing uh, 45 minutes. So, uh, and I think that the majority of the songs is going to be the new record. Because we just realized that, like, there is there is some records or some songs from the previous records that will definitely make a reappearance. But like, we've been uh, we've been rehearsing uh, the new songs and the old songs uh, because we're going back on stage uh, also before the album release, and we just noticed that 
um, it's such a difference between the old songs and the new songs also because with the old songs um, the, we kind of had to rearrange them for the band to perform them live because um, you know because they were made with a MIDI keyboard like basically when we sat down for the first rehearsals to do it live we still had to find out uh, if I'd made drum parts for a drummer with three hands, you know? So, uh, but of course for this album, like we had done, they had been so involved in the album process. So um, everyone plays their parts um, that they know. Um, uh, and and that, that makes a huge difference. Uh, but also for me personally, uh, I feel like, with these songs I've kind of come more into my own and I'm kind of singing more what I want to sing and also when I wrote the songs when I wrote the songs from the Tales record I wasn't thinking about ever performing them live when I wrote these songs I was thinking about performing them live so that also makes a, a big difference um so yeah I think I think that the set will be heavy on the new songs Cool. And, uh, you know, you're talking about arrangements as well. On, on the record, you got Vikram from Silent Skies. Actually, I was thinking, I was trying to work it into my answer, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm meandering so much because the only difference is that uh, Sophia is now also playing some of Vikram's parts because Vikram, um, like, he, in the beginning, I thought, I kind of like my own orchestrations and the key parts, and I'm just going to uh, maybe have like some additional uh, orchestrations for, you know, one or two songs. And um, and I worked with Vikram for that. And, uh, you know, I got the first two songs. And in the end, he, he went over all of the songs because I love what he did so much. And also for like the first songs, I wrote him like big lists of what I wanted and how I wanted it. And I, I even made mood boards, like <laughs> visuals for how I wanted them to feel, you know. And, uh, and for the last song, I was just like, go ahead to do your thing. You know, it's uh, it was uh, yeah, it was a delight to work with him. And um, and he did. Uh, yeah. Amazing, amazing things to the songs. He did a lot, especially in a song like um, The Exorcism. He did a lot with like bends and dissonance, which I, I really like. I love dissonance in music. And um, yeah, he he. Um, and he did like really cool like analog synthesizer things on the song like backup plan and so yeah, yeah. really 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 cool stuff yeah he is great i love the silent skies records i mean it's those albums are just you know goosebumps every time they put an yeah. album out from start to finish you know with tom's voice and his arrangements it's just I, I normally say that when it comes to Silent Skies, if they were just reading like a phone book, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. It would just sound <laughs> perfect anyway. They are just so good doing that stuff anyway. And, uh, you know, you mentioned the exorcism and dopamine. You have Alisa on the exorcism and you got Simone on uh, dopamine. Obviously, you girls know each other for a, a long time now. Yes. You just need to send an email or a message and say, I got this song you want to sing. It works that easily. <laughs> In a way it does, but for these songs it had uh it has a it they they both have kind of a specific backstory. Like for dopamine with Simone. Um I remember like we knew each other for a long time because you know it's a small world you run into each other on festivals like you're kind of like each other's co-workers <laughs> but um uh but I really got to know her after actually the first time that I opened up about um my medication and process and overcoming things and this was on a, a live streamed interview um I didn't know that she watched it, but she texted me after and she was like, let's chat. And we connected after that and we we spoke a lot. We hung out. We uh, um, we had other collaborations as well before this. And then at one point I released the Patreon version of Dopamine on, on Patreon. Um, 
And back then it was just harp and vocals. And a little synthesizer thingy. Um, and, and then she texted me like, oh, I really love this song. I listen to it a lot. And, um, and that's when I thought, okay, so we bonded over this. And now there's a song about this that she likes. So if it's ever going to be on the album, uh, I will ask her to join. And I did. And she did. And that was wonderful. She recorded it right here. And uh, we got to do the video, which was great. And then with Elisa, like we also go way, way back. And we have sort of a history of doing songs based on... Um, uh, poetry from the romantic era like not like oh romantic but um, uh, literary uh, uh, historical romantic era and um, Oh to the West Wind is, is, is based on a poem by Percy Shelley uh, by the same name and I figured that it fits so well within like the songs that we've collaborated on so far so when it when when it was finished like the first version again on, on patreon i thought and i could already kind of hear you know where her where her grunts would be um so yeah i asked her for that one as well and i was really glad that she could make it happen because she had a really challenging time like to make it fit her schedule and she moved heaven and earth to do it so i was really 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 grateful for that um and i really love how it turned out yeah yeah charla thank you very much for your time the obsession is an amazing record thank you very much for the music and uh you know i hope to see you soon you know live i, I know on this run you're not playing portugal so you know maybe next year or uh, in a festival um, yeah, we'll be amazing. We'll try to make it work and see you and the band live should be an amazing experience. Thank you very much. Have a great day and uh, hope to see you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank it was you. lovely chatting with you. Have a great Thank day. You. Bye bye. Bye.